Hey YouTube, how's it going? My name is Jonathan, and before I begin this video, I just wanted to ask you all a huge favor. If you haven't done it already, please make sure to hit the subscribe button and click the bell to get notified about my new videos. One of the things I struggle with on this channel is making sure you all see my latest content, so if you would do that for me, it would mean an absolute ton. With that said, let's get into the video. So I just recently reviewed the Galaxy S9 on my channel, and that left me wondering, what's the best phone that you can get in 2018? After all, there are a ton of really great handsets out there right now, so which phone should you actually buy? Well, in this video, I'm going to be going over 5 of my favourite phones for 2018 and giving you a little bit of explanation why you should get each one, so let's just go ahead and jump right in. Coming in at 5th place in this video is the LG V30, a phone that pretty much has it all. It's got a great camera, a huge OLED display, excellent battery life, wireless charging, waterproofing, a speedy processor, and much more. What I really like about this phone is that it doesn't compromise on anything. Sometimes you'll have a phone that'll have a really amazing display and a really bad battery life, or a really great battery life and a really bulky build. The V30 doesn't slack off on any feature, and that's something that you can't take for granted. So one of my favourite things about the V30 is its 6 inch 2880 by 1440 pixel screen, which is crisp and beautiful right out of the box. The phone also has a really great camera, LG's marketing the V30 for photographers with its 16 megapixel rear shooter, and honestly pictures you take on this phone will be vibrant and full of life. While 4K video might not look as quite as good on the V30 as say on the Galaxy S9, that's really a pretty minor trade off, and one more great thing about the V30 is its headphone jack. The phone is what LG's calling a quad DAC converter, which is the effect of making your music sound much richer and warmer than on most other phones. Overall, the V30 is definitely worth its price of around $800 on lock and it's one of the strongest Android phones you can get right now. Now the next phone on this list coming in at 4th place is the Apple iPhone X which came out last year but is arguably still the most powerful phone on the market today. There's no way you haven't already heard about the iPhone X, but honestly Apple has done an incredible job with this phone. Like the V30, it's got a big and vibrant OLED display as well as a stellar telephoto camera, and then also Apple's big new feature which is Face ID. Face ID works a little bit like Microsoft's Kinect, you use your face to unlock the phone and then also for any transactions or passwords. It's a little bit weird to use it first, but you'll quickly get used to it over time. Two of the biggest complaints that I have about the iPhone X are its price, which starts at $1000, and its breakability. Based on drop tests of the iPhone X posted by other reviewers, the iPhone X is going to crack when you drop it from almost any height, which means you're going to have to get a case for it no matter what. Honestly, the main reason why it's so hard to evaluate the iPhone X in a top 5 list like this one is because most people are already invested in either the Android or iOS ecosystem. If it was simply a matter of evaluating the phone based on its specs and price, there could be a much more nuanced discussion of whether the iPhone X's upgrades are truly worth its high price, but the fact is, if you've already been using iPhones for many years, you've probably bought a fair number of apps and games, iTunes music, movies and more, which aren't necessarily going to transfer over to Android. The iPhone X isn't the best value phone on the market, that's for sure, but if you want the best phone Apple has to offer, it's definitely the phone for you. Now, third place in this video goes to the OnePlus 5T, which comes in at about half the price of the iPhone X. This is a phone with a lot of the hardware carried over from the iPhone 5. It's got a Snapdragon 835 chipset, a long battery life, and a non-water resistant design. Its main upgrade over the OnePlus 5 is its bigger 6 inch screen, which still looks really sharp with its 401 pixels per inch. It's also got a new face unlock feature, which OnePlus has said isn't secure enough to make mobile payments, but it does perform pretty well overall. Finally, it's also got a much better low light camera, OnePlus has widened the aperture on the lens, so it'll be able to pick up more from dark environments, but that does come off the trade off of the optical zoom. Honestly, if you're looking for a phone in the $500 price range, this is the best phone I've seen, but if you are willing to spend a little bit more, I would keep watching this video. Now number 2 in this video is the Google Pixel 2, which is a sequel to what was already one of the very best Android flagship phones on the market. The Pixel 2 is the best camera quality of any Android phone, and it's also got updates like water resistance and a best in class processor that make it a top pick. Because it's a Google phone, it's also going to be getting regular Android updates, and then Google's Lens feature taps into Google's vast search database so you can immediately learn more about the world around you. When it comes to processing power, the Pixel 2 is sporting the Snapdragon 835 CPU, which is definitely not a bad CPU, it's about average for the market right now and it'll give you really solid performance, but unfortunately the battery life is a little bit subpar. You'll probably get pretty close to 14 hours of continuous video drain usage on this phone, which is definitely less than something like the Galaxy S9 or the iPhone X. Overall, the Pixel 2 is a really solid phone with, as I said, an incredible camera. It does not have a headphone jack, so that's just something you should bear in mind when getting this device, but if you're looking for an Android phone that's running the purest version of Android, this is definitely the choice for you. 
Now coming in as my first choice for the best phone you can get right now in 2018 is the Galaxy S9. This might be a little bit surprising since in my review of the S9 I said that I wasn't willing to upgrade from my current iPhone 7, but honestly if you are in need of a good phone, the S9 is definitely the choice to beat. It's got a gorgeous 5.8 inch screen, a really nice dual curved design, and then also a terrific camera for well lit shots that can't go wrong. You're getting crazy fast speeds, wireless charging, water resistance, and also some brand new colour options, blue and lilac purple, that really help this phone look really amazing. Some of my favourite features about the S9 are its fast Snapdragon 845 processor, which is going to be able to handle even the most graphics intensive games you play on your phone. It's also got a dual speaker system, a headphone jack, and then 64GB of storage that can be expanded by up to 400GB more. The S9 is also pioneering new camera technology with its dual aperture lens that can switch between an f2.4 setting and an f1.5 setting, and what that means in practical terms is that any pictures you take on this phone, whether they're in darker conditions or brighter conditions, are going to look absolutely absolutely amazing. For only $750, the S9 is also one of the most affordable flagship phones on the market right now, and that means a whole lot more when companies like Apple are beginning to charge like $1000 for one of their newest phones. Overall, the S9 is the phone to get in 2018, but before I end off this video, I do just want to say one more thing, which is that if you are in need of a new phone, you should definitely consider one of the choices in this video, but if you have a working phone, you may not need to upgrade. This is what I said in my S9 review as well, but the fact is, even last generation phones, like the phones that came out in 2017 and 2016 are still really solid choices, they're still capable of running 90% of the things that these current flagship phones are running, and that's something that you should be considering in your phone buying purchase. But with that said, let me know your favourite phone of 2018 in the comment section down below, make sure to hit that subscribe button and click the bell to get notified when I post new videos, and with that said, I will see you next time.